A very warm welcome to you on World Kindness Day 2022. I have the great privilege and honour. Liz and I are here with the wonderful James Baraz. Welcome, James. Very happy to be here with you. Definitely. I'm just going... I'm, I'm so, so happy to be with you. We're, we're so delighted and grateful that you could carve out some time in your very busy schedule. I'm just going to introduce um, a little bit about you to our wonderful audience, and then we'll open with some great questions. So the lovely James Barras um, has been a meditation teacher since 1978. He is, a create, he is the creator and teacher of the amazing, wonderful Awakening Joy course, and that started in 2003. He leads retreats, workshops, classes in the US and abroad. He's the co-founding teacher of Spirit Rock Meditation Center in Woodacre, California. He's the co-author of this amazing book, which is how our relationship began, uh, Awakening Joy, based on the course uh, with his um, dear friend Shoshana Alexandra as the co-author and he's also written Awakening Joy for Kids with Michelle Liliana. He is a guiding teacher for One Earth Sangha, a website devoted to expressing a Buddhist response to climate change. And a little bit about him, the person, uh, James lives in Berkeley, California with his lovely wife Jane. And he's two and has two sons and three grandchildren. So he's got his hands full. So, James, we are so delighted you're with us for World Kindness Day. Our relationship began uh, when we chose to read this amazing book. As you know, Liz and I and our Self Compassion Book Club have been deeply touched by this book. So we are really honoured that you can spend some time with us on World Kindness Day talking about how perhaps we can awaken joy through kindness, how by awakening joy more kindness may flow. Uh, it's a very broad topic. We can go um, wide and deep. Um, we just would love to share your wisdom, uh, your knowledge and your guidance with the World Kindness audience today so that they can perhaps touch in or taste a little bit more of the innate joy that uh, is within each and every one of us. Hmm. Well, it's a real uh, delight and if I can say so, joy uh, to be here with you, you know, especially since I, you've communicated how, um, how much you and your group have enjoyed working with uh, principles and uh, and reading the book. So um, makes it easy. I don't have to, I don't need to convince or persuade you uh, this stuff works. Um, I know it works. I didn't invent the, the, the teachings and the, the principles, uh, but I'm glad that the way I put it into uh, an accessible uh, communication has landed for you. So where to begin, James? If we are struggling, obviously Liz and I teach self-compassion and we know there's lots of struggle in the world right now. We've had several years of um, global challenge in a sort of connected global way. And now we're going through this interesting transition again of readjustment but there seems to be a lot more awareness and therefore a lot more awareness of the struggle people have, their mental health, um, the internal suffering, uh, the sadness, the grief um, has almost been, it's like the veil's been lifted. So knowing that all that's been stirred up and people are starting to name it and acknowledge it and be with, how do we spark joy in amongst all of that? <laughs> well, there are, there are ways, uh, a number of ways to spark joy. That's what my book and my course are about. But the, the, first, uh, the first question is, uh, which I sense uh, behind what you're asking is, is it okay 
to feel joy, um, which is a, which is something that is a very legitimate question. It's so easy to get into despair or worry about the uncertainty of life or sadness around the suffering or where we're headed. Uh, and so a lot of times people say, you know, it, is it okay? Is it okay for me to feel joy if I say I have a have have good things in my life? And uh, is it okay to share it? Or is it is it okay to even feel good with so much suffering? And and you know my answer is a, a definitive, resounding yes, which I think is uh, actually an important understanding that this becomes a gift to everybody else. Uh, and I certainly have had that question for myself um, arise and I get sad and I get uh, concerned. Um, but if I only stay in that place, um, not only am I mm, suffering, but all I'm, I'm doing is just contributing more despair and sadness in the world. Um, so in, in the teachings, this world, as you might know the, the well-known expression, there's in the Taoists, they say this world is comprised of 10,000 joys and 10,000 sorrows. And that's what our curriculum is about here on the planet. And if we only get stuck in the sorrows, it's a very gloomy way to go through our life. If we only focus on the joys and yes, isn't it wonderful and aren't I happy? Well, you're living in what sometimes uh, people call la la land, uh, where you're, you're not, you're living in denial. But if you can learn how to take in and not be overwhelmed by the sorrows, but process them so that they deepen your compassion and your connection uh, and not get stuck in the grief or the overwhelm and to not miss all the goodness in life so that we get nourished by it and we have energy to want to make this a better world and we see all the blessings, then we become uh, a richer person where every moment counts. Um, and so we tend to see what's wrong. That's how our brains are wired up with this almond shaped neural uh, cl a cluster of neurons called the amygdala. And we scan for the on the horizon for what can go wrong, what the danger is. And so it takes practice to look for what's right. Um, and so this becomes a real important understanding and cultivating that. So would you say that acts of kindness, learning to be kind to oneself and actively seeking out ways to be kind to others would help rebalance that and and uh, bring more joy? <laughs> and I know this is the, the Kind Mind Academy and uh, World Kindness Day. <laughs> I, this is my religion too. This is the Dalai Lama says, my religion is kindness. And that's really what it all comes down to, having a, a kind, um, warm-hearted, well-wishing for others. And definitely you have to include yourself, otherwise you're, you're missing out on the source of all of that kindness. Um, in the teachings that have been so um, transformative for me, um, all of the wholesome states, whether it's joy or gratitude or generosity or compassion or kindness, they all come from um, a sense of expansion, a sense of an opening of the heart. And all of the states of suffering, fear, worry, jealousy, anger, hatred, you know those, right? Uh, confusion, um, 
they're all states of contraction. And these are just as much a part of being human as these, but we tend to get contracted, especially when we're under stress, which these times are filled with. And so it takes an extra intention or practice. Some people have it naturally, but for most of us, it takes some practice to learn to relax enough to let our kindness be naturally flowing. I mean, most people I think are kind inside. So it's not that you have to somehow discover it. It's in, it's innate, but we can invite it and remind ourselves of all the good in life through that feeling of basic warmth and kindness. And that opens the channel for joy and all of those other qualities positive qualities to, um, uh, to fly, to follow. As I said, you know, that's why the, the Dalai Lama says my religion is kindness. Uh, just a basic goodwill is at the heart of it all. Liz, I'm aware I'm hogging the, <laughs> the mic. Would you like to ask James a question? Oh, thank you so much, James. And, you know, this last weekend, um, Catherine and I, and I had the, the privilege of um, getting married, actually, and it was a real joy and delight. And um, let me just change this here so I can actually see, <laughs> see you both. It was a real joy and delight. And my focus for the whole day um, was to actually connect with each one of our guests. And so whether that's standing at the front, having the ceremony, um, and we uh, actually punctuated it with what we call soft landings, you know, just this 30 seconds or 60 seconds of quiet meditation space. And I must say, it was just as you were saying with this expansive, like, you know, it was able to expand our heart space. And so we could be, well, I could certainly, I can speak for myself, can be with our guests in a way that was so deeply connected and actually enriched the whole experience for me far beyond anything that I could have ever imagined. Mm. And the little pockets of joy and delight, because not only was I able to expand and connect, I was then, I noticed, able to receive even more fully. And so, um, you know, in our book club, with when we were looking at awakening joy and uh, one of our participants had this joy spotting. And so we were looking, actively looking for moments mm. of joy and we were sharing them with each other so that we could actually then have this contagion of joy spotting. And we mm. were looking for it. And of course, the more we look for it, like our RAS detectors are out there looking for the joy. Mm -hmm. um, and so similarly, you know, joy, whether it's kindness, whether we, you know, all of these heart opening activities can be so yummy and delicious and really fulfilling, nurturing. Um, actually, I think I would really love to ask you if we could just drop into a little bit of um, quiet reflection with you. Maybe you could put your insight timer on for the two minutes and we just have that and maybe you could share some of your deepest expansive joy um, invitations with our community because we have people joining us from around the world. And so it's not just the UK or Europe, but I know that we've got lots of people from the US mm -hmm. and Canada and also around to India and Singapore and lots and lots of different countries. So I think at last count we had uh, 16 or 17 and no doubt that will increase as well. Mm -hmm. So if we that. can... You know, I, I've got this vision of all of these touch points of joy as we um, send out this um, quiet reflection. So I'm going to stop talking mm. and um, and pass back to you, my friend. Mm. Well, first, uh, if it's okay uh, to uh, uh, say, um, I, you had told me just before we came on that you uh, you and Catherine uh, got married and. 
I was so happy. Um, and I just invite everybody who's watching this um, to first bless your marriage because now there's a little bit more happiness in the world. You've been together, you told me for 17 years and you have finally uh, done this major uh, rite of passage together. And so there's a, a little bit more love and connection and may, may the love that you share um, radiate out to affect everyone in your lives. As I often say, the love created by your union is greater than the sum of what you each individually possess. May it be a, a source of inspiration to awaken the love in everyone. So first, I just want to invite everybody to, to bless you and you receive it. Just take it in. May you have a life filled with love and growth and kindness and peace and joy. And now I invite everyone who just was doing that with me. Uh, first, how did it feel when you, when Liz shared that news? Didn't it feel good? Oh, how wonderful, probably. It wasn't like you were saying, hey, what about me? Maybe you were, that sometimes can happen. But for most people, it's, oh, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that lovely? Especially seeing both of your, your faces on the screen. So it's a gift that you gave to everyone. And for you to receive it, for you to really be present, like you said you were at the wedding, ah, it amplifies the feedback loop. Oh, yes, they're taking it in the the sender can see and you're just feeling it and then you can send it out so it doesn't there's no separation between the sender and the receiver so with that in mind i invite all of us to bring to mind something in your life that you're grateful for or someone that you're grateful to. And call up an image of this blessing. Maybe a friend smiling back at you saying, oh, thanks for thinking of me, or some other circumstance in, in your life. And as you call up that image, give a simple silent thank you right from your heart to that person or to life. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being in my life. Or thank you, life. And with that thank you, just relax and enjoy that heart filled with gratitude. Nothing you need to squeeze out, just relax and be present for it. Thank you. Now take a, a nice deep breath. And bring to mind another blessing, 
someone or something that you're grateful for. And again, you can call up an image so it becomes more vivid. And again, a simple thank you right from your heart. Connect with it. Thank you. And let yourself feel it. Just enjoy and relax into it. One more breath, one last time. We do things in threes and often in these teachings. One last blessing, you probably have so many. Call up an image. So you really connect. Mm, oh, thank you as well. And then just enjoy that feeling. Notice how it feels in your body and in your mind and in your heart. And let yourself come out gently. Thank you so much, James. I could have stayed there <laughs> for a long time. And it's such um, a graceful, really effortless practice. It, it wasn't hard to access those, even in really difficult times. I know I'm really grateful that I have, you know, this beautiful home that I live in. I know I'm really grateful to have Leah's and uh, my children dear friends and the difference in my whole energy and all the tension and the rushing of the day just melted away mm -hmm. interesting like that you just you can incline the mind anywhere and mostly we don't realize that and get caught in the in the tape loops of what's what are top 10 tunes which are usually not so much fun filled with melodrama uh are in our mind and we get contracted and it's not like i said before it's not to be in denial but it, the gratitude which is one of the the 10 themes that i uh, write about and teach in my course is probably the most direct way to get a wider container, not to put your head in the sand, but to just see things in a much bigger context. Yes, there's difficulties and there's so much goodness. And kindness is the other direct way when we are simply coming from, a, from goodwill it naturally opens the heart. In these teachings, it's the, it's the antidote to fear and danger. That's how the loving kindness practice was, uh, was first taught, as, as it said in the, in the scriptures. So when you're feeling mm, bummed out or tight or uh, frustrated, kindness is being kind to someone being kind to yourself with a compassionate heart 
if not an appreciative heart, is the, the greatest antidote because that moves it from this contraction to a sense of ease and openness and uh, an expanded love. So beautiful. And uh, I'm reminded as you say that about uh, what you call the soap operas. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been quoting that a lot. So, oh, I'm running a soap opera now. I think I need to change tack. Mm -hmm. And my experience is definitely gratitude for me is um, so powerful. And certainly when I've um, given my time uh, through volunteering, doing something out of kindness, again, expands me beyond any logical way in which we could try and create it in a sort of man-made sense. Mm -hmm. And you also, by the way, hit on one other really great antidote to the contracted heart. Besides gratitude and kindness, uh, a sense of humor when you were just saying, oh yeah, the soap operas, and you can laugh at this crazy mind that we've all been issued. When you can laugh, that's another expansive perspective where you're not in the story and you're just saying, wow, instead of, oh, look at my mind. Wow, look at the mind, not my mind. Look at the mind and you're outside of that soap opera and getting a little entertainment for a few moments changes everything. So you hit on another one, all natural. It's it's so true. And uh, I, I do feel I was blessed uh, with a particularly dodgy sense of humor, which I, I positively enjoy. Now. Lucky you. And, Don't hold back. Let and, uh, everybody hear it. <laughs> Well, it's interesting, Liz and I have often talked about that when we're giving um, teaching mindful self-compassion or holding a space for, you know, self-compassion practice. Obviously, we often uncover some really big stuff, uh, soap operas or otherwise, and mm -hmm. and the humour can hold it so beautifully and and with kindness, with with gentleness, with compassion. Uh, but it does really, you know change things if we can have a giggle about uh some of the stuff that we've had to meet uh or watching our own patterns as i would say now it's like oh hello old friend <laughs> oh, excellent excellent that story you're back as as one uh one great uh american philosopher wavy gravy uh his name is who's a a, a kind of comedian spiritual teacher he says, if you can't laugh, it's just not funny. And, uh, and that's what we, we need. That's what comedy is mostly about. The comedians kind of talking about the craziness of this world, hopefully in a, in a kind way. And there's, there's a whole other perspective when you say, isn't, isn't humanity kind of weird? But here we are in it together. Okay, let's make the best out of it. And especially if you can turn that humor towards yourself, not laughing, not laughing at yourself, but you're laughing with yourself. You're not putting yourself down, but you're just laughing in a in a loving way. Uh, oh, it changes everything. It's just the mind created that soap opera, you know. As the world turns, it's one of the soap operas in, in America. So. Uh. <laughs> well, James, we are so grateful to have this time with you. I'm very sad to uh, need to wrap this up because mm -hmm. there's only so many hours in a World Kindness Day event <laughs> and um, we're squeezing you in. But uh, I know that everything that you've shared and and more, obviously, we highly recommend everyone reading this incredible book awakening joy um because it will change things it opens your eyes to things and i know that everything you've shared um in writing and in word will have and continues to touch so many lives but especially on a celebration like world kindness day we are deeply grateful thank you so much for being with us we mm. appreciate you very much thank Ooh. you so much for 
for having me and uh, letting me uh, share my two cents and uh, maybe putting a little bit more kindness and gratitude in the world and maybe a little bit more joy to, you know, through the, through the book, through the course uh, that I love to share with people, you know, it's all inside of you and you can practice it and, um, and then share it with others. That's the best part. Your own kindness, your own joy uh, is contagious. So um, scattered joy. Emerson is one of the, the uh, American writers. That was one of his lines, scattered joy and scattered kindness. Joy. Brilliant. James, deep thanks. And thanks. may you be showered in joy blessings as well. Mm. Love the love. Thank you very much. <laughs>